Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is a, a part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, our case today comes from the uh, realm of GI pathology. It's a 75-year-old uh, a woman, actually, uh, with anemia and a right-sided mass in the colon. Uh, she's uh, not had any specific symptoms of pain, uh, but on further exam, she's found to be losing blood uh, in the colon, and uh, a tumor is discovered, uh, which leads to resection of her uh, right colon. Uh, so this uh, lesion, like uh, many uh, lesions in the right colon, is a little bit on the bulky side. Uh, we can see that it's uh, quite blue, and, and it's got some areas of maybe necrosis here as well, uh, and it's infiltrating well into the wall. So uh, we'll go look at the interface uh, first off with the uh, colonic mucosa, uh, and we don't see conventional dysplastic changes, at least adjacent to this uh, tumor. Uh, areas of ulceration certainly account for her uh, blood loss and anemia. Uh, and as we scan around at low power, we see there's a little bit of uh, epithelial type architecture, uh, but we certainly don't see much in the way of glands. We don't see uh, mucin production uh, per se, uh, and we do seem to have a lot of uh, inflammatory reaction here. So looking a little higher magnification, uh, we can see that these cells uh, are uh, clustered and cohesive. They have sort of uh, amphiphilic uh, cytoplasm and fairly large uh, nuclei, uh, prominent nucleoli in many of these uh, cells. Uh, and as we look around, we can see um, here's a few neutrophils in uh, maybe a lumen, but uh, no definite lumen formation or glandular features, no signet ring cell forms. Um, and it looks as though this tumor is quite uh, mitotically active. There's a number of mitotic figures uh, that we can see in areas of this tumor, along with this uh, infiltrative pattern of lymphocytes uh, accompanying the lesion. Looking a little bit further, this uh, 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 tumor does appear to have uh, uh, potentially some areas of lymphovascular invasion. Uh, here's a few uh, nests that uh, jump out at us as potentially uh, within the lumen of a uh, small vessel. Um, and let's see what other features we can identify here uh, as we look along uh, the contours of this lesion. We can see there's quite a, a pronounced uh, inflammatory response. Um, maybe no, no definite granulomatous uh, changes. Uh, but uh, certainly a very dense uh, inflammatory infiltrate accompanying this uh, tumor. We'll look at the other uh, fragment here. Let's see, we can see here the mesothelial surface uh, shows uh, pronounced proliferation uh, of uh, mesothelial type cells, uh, although it's possible these could be uh, uh, tumor cells that have reached the surface. Uh, and that obviously would change the staging. Uh, they look a little bit concerning, so we might uh, want to stain those uh, uh, and evaluate for the potential uh, involvement of the surface by uh, this tumor. So this is not a conventional adenocarcinoma of the colon. Uh, and as we look at it with this uh, quite uh, cohesive sheet-like growth, uh, we could think of a couple of things. Uh, we could think of undifferentiated carcinomas. Uh, we could think of a neuroendocrine carcinoma. Uh, we could think of um, very poorly differentiated conventional adenocarcinomas. Uh, but in reality, this uh, is uh, fairly typical uh, given the uh, uh, nature of the inflammatory infiltrate uh, for a medullary carcinoma. Uh, medullary carcinoma, as you'll recall, is a distinctive uh, though uncommon type of colon carcinoma, uh, which is morphologically similar to uh, similar uh, medullary type tumors that can be seen in the breast and pancreas. Of course, those are not molecularly identical uh, by any means. Uh, 
Uh, but typically, this is a right-sided lesion uh, uh, with a predominance of uh, females. Uh, it does tend to have solid growth with a sort of pushing border with nested or organite or, or sheet-like uh, uh, patterns. And then strikingly, this prominent infiltrate of lymphocytes, high mitotic rate, vesicular nuclei with a very high NC ratio, and no evidence of uh, mucin production really. Uh, there may be a minor component of well-differentiated adenocarcinomas, certainly less than 20%. Um, as this may be a component of uh, uh, certain mixed carcinomas can have areas of medullary type differentiation, especially in patients who have um, uh, microsatellite instability. Uh, we'll take another look at another similar kind of case. Again, we can see this very diffuse pattern of growth without any evidence of uh, uh, pre-existing polyp. Uh, we see the inflammatory uh, type response that uh, runs uh, full thickness, sort of a Crohn's-like response. This one not uh, quite as deeply invasive um, and not uh, nearly as organoid, uh, but generally the margin somewhat pushing here. Uh, and again, we see high-grade uh, features, uh, nuclei uh, that are uh, fairly uh, prominent, excuse me, nucleoli that are prominent, uh, sheet-like clusters, and then admixed in here. Uh, lots of uh, lymphocytes uh, that go along with this uh, type of tumor. Um, so I've given you a couple of examples so that uh, you'll be familiar with it uh, when you next uh, encounter it. Uh, it's not, as I said, a commonly encountered type, uh, but in a busy colorectal surgery uh, center, uh, you may see this uh, once a year or every other year uh, without uh, uh, being concerned that you're overdiagnosing it or perhaps missing it either. Uh, the immunohistochemistry can be uh, useful in this case. It's been reported that calretinin is uh, positive in uh, about 80% or potentially other, uh, potentially higher uh, number. Uh, it's certainly negative for neuroendocrine markers and the conventional uh, markers for colonic carcinoma, CK7, CK20, CDX2, uh, can be uh, often negative. Uh, a minority are positive with uh, any of these uh, markers. Uh, as I've mentioned, it's highly associated with microsatellite instability, and so testing with uh, immunohistochemistry will usually disclose defects with uh, MLH1 or MSH2. Um, and uh, BRAF mutations, uh, an indication of the sporadic type of uh, MSI, uh, are commonly seen. However, uh, it does occur in patients with Lynch syndrome, and so uh, uh, in many cases, uh, further testing after, uh, if, if you don't detect a BRAF mutation, uh, may, be, may be warranted. The differential diagnosis, as I've uh, indicated in our discussion, includes high-grade uh, adenocarcinomas, undifferentiated carcinoma, and large cell <clears throat> neuroendocrine carcinomas. Uh, certainly, these would have a different immunohistochemical profile. Uh, undifferentiated carcinoma may uh, likewise have an a different profile, certainly would be negative for calretinin. And high-grade adenocarcinomas would be uh, more strongly positive uh, with the uh, conventional uh, CK20 and CDX2 markers. So that uh, summarizes our final diagnosis for today is medullary carcinoma of the colon. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, that will help you in the next uh, encounter. Uh, if you like this program, please uh, indicate below. Share your comments about uh, times you've encountered or what your uh, other differential considerations might be in a situation like this. Uh, your experience with immunohistochemistry certainly uh, welcome in this kind of tumor. And we hope that you'll subscribe and share this uh, video with others who may be uh, uh, trying to master some of the uh, nuances of GI pathology uh, in their day-to-day uh, -day lives. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining us.